This week's Pilch Point with Avram Pilch is proudly powered by PureVPN. The best way to protect your privacy online is with PureVPN. You can hide your online activities, say goodbye to regional restrictions, and improve your streaming quality. Plus, it's available for almost all your, all of your devices, and you can get a special price right now by going to pilchpoint.live slash purevpn. All right, Abram. It's been a little while since we've gotten to do this, but I think you've got yep. something to show us. Yes, so it's show and tell. So this right here is the latest notebook that I am reviewing. It is the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Yoga 6th Gen. That means that there have been five previous generations of X1 Yoga, and this is the sixth. So uh, this is a really fantastic two-in-one. It has a lot of a lot going for it so let's so let's start with the good stuff so first of all this is aluminum here this is what's called storm gray the color is but it's uh so if you like thinkpad black uh don't get this one because this is the color come only color it comes in uh but it's uh obviously bends back the 14 inch screen bends back a full 180 degrees uh and you get several screen choices with it. You can, and it is 16 by 10 resolution. So uh, aspect ratio. So uh, it's, this is 1920 by 1200 res, but you can also get uh, 3840 by, yikes, not, it's like 4K, but a step above 4K because it's 1610. Um, but I wouldn't recommend that because that would probably wreak havoc on the battery life. And the battery life is really good. So um, on our test, this notebook got 14 and a half hours of battery life. Wow. Which is, which is fantastic. Uh, this is this configuration has a core i7 uh, 1185 G7 processor in it. Uh, it's got 512, 512 gigabyte SSD and 16 gigs of RAM. <laughs> Now, uh, you can buy this with eight gigs. Uh, don't do it. Uh, you should, nobody should be buying, <laughs> nobody who's serious about their computer today should be buying anything with less than 16 gigs of RAM. Um, it has a really fantastic ThinkPad keyboard on it. Um, and of course, my favorite, which not everybody loves, the track point, but also a very uh, comfortable touchpad here. Um, interestingly, also, it has a stylus in a stylus garage. So if you see over here, and I'm trying to show is this little nut, this little section here, I gotta look at it to pull it out, but it is a little pen. So the stylus is a little smaller than some of the competitors like the HP Spectre X360, but the advantage is it goes into that little garage. And so you can very easily um, you can very easily use the stylus for writing and drawing. Um, by the way, this is a matte, an anti-glare display that I have here. So, um, even though this is touchpad, I mean, a touchscreen, it's, uh, it's matte. Uh, you can get, you can also get this as a privacy guard, which means, uh, if someone's sitting next to you on the train, you can limit the viewing angles, but, uh, today i would try to stay away from people on the train anyway um but uh, uh the screen itself uh this is the lowest end sc screen option on it and the color is decent it's about 71 percent of dci p3 gamut it, it uh, has good brightness at 350 nits uh so that's that's pretty good the overall performance for you know an alt for a lightweight notebook this is three pounds um an ultrabook like this is is good uh, obviously it's not going to play games because there's no integrated graphics but um it's a really good productivity machine uh there's also a this on off button here is actually a fingerprint reader so you can kind of log in and turn on at the same time definitely and, a uh, trend that i like yeah um 
some prior ThinkPads had the on-off button on the side, which I really did not like. Oh, and this has good uh, port selection. So here you have uh, a USB-A on this side, and you've got on this side uh, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, another USB-A, and HDMI out. So you don't skimp on the ports. So, you know, I mean, it's not the thinnest that it could be. It's 0.6 inches, which to me is really thin. But, you know, there are ones on the, there are things on the market that are less than 0.6 inches thick and a stew giving you a USB type A port, which most USB products still use. So uh, I'd rather have the A port, to be honest. Um, but uh, this starts at $1,300. Uh, I definitely recommend, though, that you spend a little bit more to configure it up with 16 gigs of RAM because you can't upgrade the RAM. It's soldered. Uh, and uh, at least a 500 gig SSD. So uh, that's just a quick look at the X1 Yoga Gen 6. Uh, I think that X1 Yoga Gen 6, uh, I review that will be going up in the next couple of days on Tom's hardware. Uh, but it's uh, a really, really good business to in one. I'm, I'm putting up that screen. Uh, <laughs> it's a half second behind you. Um, yeah, it, it looks like a really solid, really solid machine. I'm, I'm impressed by the number of ports because one of the things that you know we've been talking about for a little while has been the, the constant degradation in the number of ports available yeah, it, as it's just as companies. It. Yeah, as companies try to be the thinnest on the block, they end up. You know, dumping things it's, that are it's, valuable. Now, it's not. It's not worth it. I mean, granted, at three pounds, this is not the lightest on the block. The if you get the ThinkPad X1 Carbon, uh, which I have, I think may have brought on the show before, mm -hmm. but that is now up to the ninth gen. Is just coming out with I think the ninth gen Carbon, which uh, I haven't tested yet. The last I tested was the eighth gen Carbon. That is lighter. That is two, two and a half pounds. So it's half a pound less than this. Um, and probably for me, I would more consider that one because I don't need the, uh, the bend back screen. I don't need the two in one. However, some people really like this, especially when you combine it with the pen. So, you know, you, yeah. let's say you go in somewhere and you want to, I don't know, take notes or something. Um, you can do it, you know. Um, so you want to draw something, whatever, you can do it. And uh, the fact that this is such a nice anti-reflective display means uh, that it's really easy to, you know, to you, to use like this and you don't end up just looking at a mirror picture of yourself when you're mm -hmm. looking at it close up like this, as you might on a very glossy display. So I, I think it's... Uh, if you like the two-in-one style, which a lot of people do, uh, this is definitely should be near the top of your of your shopping list. Very cool. I, I like the style. Obviously, you know, longtime viewers know that <laughs> the computer that's sitting here next to me. Um, and when I'm when I'm out and about, it's not unusual for me to pop this screen off and use it with the uh, with the stylus. Same with my phone. Uh, so that's that's definitely something that. That what, I would appreciate, but I also do know. You use? Uh, it depends on what I'm doing. With stylus, what do you do with it? It depends on what I'm doing. Sometimes I'm taking notes and something like OneNote. Sometimes I'm, I'm uh, drawing. Sometimes I'll have Inkscape open. Uh, I use, I spend a lot of time in Inkscape. In fact, all of the, for the people who are watching the show, everything you're seeing except the actual live video is all from Inkscape. Uh, See. The interesting thing about it is I, I am of kind of a, a split mind, right? I love the idea of scribbling on my, on my computer, mm -hmm. but I have yet to see the app that really let me do what I wanted to do. And I think the main thing I would do with it is I would attempt and be frustrated <laughs> to use the handwriting keyboard. Like I would open up something that I do take notes in or do write in like Google Docs. And I would just want to be able to 
to write in that. And I'd want to be able to do it while I was uh, standing up. Because I think that is the that is the use case where you really cannot easily use a laptop. Like, yeah. you know, you, it's not easy to, like, you know, assuming someday we're all going back to CES and waiting in line, you know, I think about the scenario where I'm waiting in a long line to get into something for, for half an hour. I uh -huh. want to be writing an article and right. I'm standing in line and moving. And so it's not easy to try and write like this. Um, you know, you worry you're going to drop it. It's not, it's not pleasant. Right. Uh, I mean, I've seen a couple of weird contraptions where people could wear a laptop around their waist, but, yeah. uh, over your shoulders, but it's, it's not common. So yeah. the easiest thing ergonomically is would be to turn into a tablet, uh, tablet mode, but and start writing. But then I realize how bad my handwriting is and the handwriting recognition and it's, it's disaster. Uh, so, I don't know. Uh, for me, I just haven't found a. I would get one of these and I would say, oh, wow, well, I'm really going to change the way I work. And like that would last about a minute. So, yeah. same thing with when I got the Galaxy Note, Galaxy Note phone. One of my phones a few phones ago was a Galaxy Note. I went, oh, great. Now I'm going to take notes everywhere. That lasted about a day. <laughs> so, so, you know. My, my most know common. Yourself. My most common usage, and again, I am fully aware that I am not normal. This is not something that probably anybody who's watching the show <laughs> does, but I do a lot of wiring diagrams, right? When we're going and doing something like like this weekend at, at uh, MetroCon, setting up the Hotto stuff, we drew out a wiring diagram, and that's real nice to be able to do on a tablet because you're way less likely to lose that than a... A clipboard which always goes missing <laughs> guaranteed to disappear so so yeah i do a lot of wiring diagrams and stuff on there too but again i know i'm fully aware that's not a normal use case <laughs> for people but anyway that's that's one of my main use cases so i i like this thing though i've i've not i've not personally had a yoga i know you know that john uh, had one uh, a number of generations ago. Uh, he really liked his. Um, I just never had that. I've I've kind of stuck to the removable screen uh, devices. I mean, but I love the removable screen concept. Uh, Microsoft hasn't really. I mean, I don't think they've really kept up with it though. Because what? How? The most recent Surface Book update was when? I think they're too long. A couple ago. processor generations behind, right? Yeah, there's a patent so, out there. They just they just uh, filed a patent this week. It looks like they're gonna have a a new device with a new hinge. Uh, I mean, I really I really do like though what Microsoft has done, which you really haven't seen anywhere else. Uh, yeah. Right. I mean, Lenovo at one time had I'm trying to remember the name of it, a detachable like that, mm -hmm. and that lasted one generation, and it was. It was over, yep. Because uh, normally you have normally you have either this bend back design, or you have a tablet. Normally you either have a tablet first design like the Surface, mm -hmm. like the Surface Pro or whatever, yep. or you have a laptop first design like this. And since most people are probably using this primarily as a laptop, it's okay to have a laptop first design. Absolutely. And yet, this one somehow Microsoft managed to think in both terms and nobody has stuck with it but them it it's just yeah the and that was one of the things that microsoft said when they launched the surface brand was that it was designed to inspire uh new thinking and hardware design and it did right we've got all kinds of new hardware concepts that have come out since then companies try stuff they they do weird things microsoft's got the weird surface studio uh <laughs> You know, they've got all kinds of oddball things, and I think that's uh, been a, a, a good thing because, you know, things like the yoga continue to, to improve and, uh, yep. and get better because there are companies out there doing weird stuff. So uh, you said that this, uh, that this review is coming soon? 
yes, will be up this week on tomshardware.com. Fantastic. Well, I look forward to reading it, and uh, I guess I look forward to seeing what we talk about next. Hello, YouTube. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Pilch Point with Avram Pilch. Uh, if you did, please subscribe to our channel, and of course, hit the notification bell, since subscriptions don't mean much on YouTube anymore. Uh, and if you've got topics you'd like us to discuss in the future, we'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Uh, if you don't want to follow us on YouTube, that's okay. There's a lot of other ways that you can follow our content. You can find all of that by going to plughitslive.com slash subscribe. There you'll see all of our shows and all the different ways that you can watch, listen, and follow along.